Good morning. Welcome to our 1030 worship service. So good to have you here. I am Jim Miller, the senior pastor here at Grace, and I welcome you as we gather here in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and to all who are joining us online. So glad that you are here as we celebrate this Thanksgiving Sunday, and I hope and pray that you have a very special Thanksgiving celebration wherever you are traveling to or whoever you are hosting, however you're spending your day. I pray it will be a day of blessing for you. It's a blessing to have you here to worship with us. And to our guests who are here joining us online, welcome. So glad that you're here. As is our custom, I invite everyone to please sign the registration book and pass that along to the person beside you. Uh, our Zoom folks, if you could put your name in the chat and Facebook, we'd love to know that you're here. If you want to say a word of good morning to your fellow worshipers, we are grateful that we can connect. Well, it's hard to believe that uh, Thanksgiving is upon us already. I just want to remind us that uh, this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock here at Grace, we'll have our ecumenical Thanksgiving service. So we will have uh, be represented by congregations from, of course, here at Grace to Gaithersburg Presbyterian, um, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and all are invited. So I hope you can be here. Or if you are traveling somewhere uh, during the week, uh, please remember our service will be broadcast as well. So it's the same Zoom link and Facebook that got you here. Also, uh, I expect a little bit more energized worship today because uh, cookies are being served in the narthex there. So if you've already in, indulged there, why uh, that's all to do with our spirit of giving has begun here where we have the opportunity to, bless, to be blessing families in our community. So many ways that we can be giving back, but you already saw you have an opportunity to take a tag and to be shopping for for these folks and bringing your gift back and uh, Terry is out there to instruct you in all the specifics but uh, thank you for what you're doing to to share the joy this season through all the various ways in our community and also globally that Grace connects I am so thankful for that the white rose on our altar is in loving memory of Virginia Wallen Virginia a longtime uh, member here at Grace passed this past week uh, she uh, lived at Asbury for quite a few years. The Asbury Communion Service we have uh, once a month. Virginia was the one who organized that, and it was a greeter in the Trot Building and very faithful in the life of the church here. In fact, our Asbury connection is something we celebrate, and uh, Virginia would describe going to Asbury as a child with her mom and, and caring for the residents there at that time. So just this long-time connection, we are so grateful for Virginia, and so let us be keeping the Wallen family in our prayers. This time I invite you to join me in our call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. God, we delight in your creation. We thank you for soft breezes, crisp apples, and changing seasons that remind us of your presence and provision. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. God, we delight in our connectedness. We thank you for friends who check in, for church family who lift one another up, for neighbors who show up in the good and challenging times. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. God, we delight in your peace that dwells among us. We give thanks for neighbors who offer help in times of trouble, gentleness in the midst of pain, and acts of kindness during seasons of struggle. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving and rejoicing. Come, let us worship God together. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our opening hymn, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come, found on screen and page 694. Thank you.
Please be seated. We give thanks that God will bring about that harvest. God's faithfulness we celebrate each time we gather to worship. Each time we gather to worship, we offer our thanks and praise to God. An important part of our gathering is our time of confession, where we, we pray for God's cleansing that we can begin anew. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Faithful God, we confess that we do not give attention to the things that are a few. We listen to rumors and gossip instead of what is true and honorable. We do not hold fast to justice. We do not train our hearts on what is pure and pleasing to you. In our words and our deeds, we stray from all that is commendable, excellent, and worthy of praise. We do not attend to all we have received and learned of your good news. And so we do not live in peace with you or with our neighbors. Forgive us, we pray. Free us to live as your grateful people. Receive the good news. God pays attention to us when we pray. God receives our confession and saves us by grace. May the peace of God guard us in mind and heart now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Celebrating the peace from God that is ours to know this day, I invite us to exchange signs of peace with one another. So whether it's fist bumps, air hugs, handshakes, you will judge and as we gather, but let us celebrate the peace of God that is with us. the house of God. So glad that we have this opportunity to worship together. We're so grateful to have children amongst us here. So if we have those who are joining us online, good morning. If we have any here amongst us, please join me for this morning's children's moment up here. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. So glad we can gather together. Sure, come join us here. Sure, come jo sure. we got plenty of room here. Oh. So good to have you all here. 
and see Sally for welcome home. There you go. There's the college students here. It's, that's one of the many blessings of this special week. So what are we celebrating this week? What is it? We're, Thanksgiving, that's right. What do you like about Thanksgiving? Food. Food? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Any foods you don't like? Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Oh, you'll learn. <laughs> well, stuffing? Okay, all right. All right, I'll have your Brussels sprouts, I'll have your stuffing, because those sound good to me, but I remember there would always be those items we didn't care for in that way, but there always seemed to be plenty, doesn't there? And that's something that we are thankful for. In fact, behind me, on our altar table, I think that's so important, just the symbolism of having a table here in our sanctuary. We're reminded that we are all invited to God's table. Each of us have a place at God's table. There's no uh, one table for adults and another for kids. You have that in your house. We have that in mine. <laughs> Every, there's room for everybody around the, around the table there in that way. Now notice what's on the table this morning in addition to our cross and candles. Can you see behind me here? We have the rose there, yeah. And the cornucopia. And just looking that up, cornucopia comes from a Latin word, but it actually also means horn of plenty. What it symbolizes there, it's, it's overflowing there, isn't it? Just a sign of overflowing, and that's what we think about with Thanksgiving. We are overflowing with gratitude. As you gather, in fact, we could spend our entire gathering just sharing what we are thankful for, but let's just shout them out at me real quickly here. What are you thankful for? What's flowing out of your hearts today? Food? We, oh, family. I'm thankful for each of you, the fact that you are part of this church community. So we have this symbol, Horn of Plenty, and I love when we have that out each year. But actually, we are those symbols. We are each overflowing with gratitude. So the question is, what do we do with this gratitude? Well, that's what Jesus teaches us about in the story today. It talks about talents, where each person is given a lot of talent, and that can be a lot of ways that God blesses us in what we have. And the question is, how do we share what God has given us? So I want to challenge you with that this week. How do you share your talent? How do you share your blessings? It could be coloring a picture for somebody and giving it to them that you know that Thanksgiving may be difficult for this year. It could be calling on a friend, you know, is home from college and catching up. How was that first semester? How is it going? Well, the cornucopia is fun to look at, but it's more fun when you can share it. And I think about that, our faith. So this morning, thanks to Lauren's help, we have an edible cornucopia there. So you are each invited to take a piece of fruit with you. Take that, and may it be something you enjoy, and may it remind you of the sharing that's taken place this day, and how might you share your blessings with others. Happy Thanksgiving to each of you. This time we invite all who are able to please stand as Amy shares with us our gospel lesson. Gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, the parable of the talents. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one each to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. 
And the one with the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Amy. I invite you to pray with me. Lord, we are grateful for your generosity. We see it and experience it in so many ways. We are able to gather in this space because of generosity of yours. We are able to gather and be part of ministries because of those who have chosen to follow you and have set us an example. Thank you for how your Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives and in this world, for this is what gives us hope. I pray, O oh God, that you will bless this time of sharing, that your same Holy Spirit that prompted us to be here or to join online in this service will work in and through all that is said, that true thanksgiving will be practiced as we gather to worship you. Bless and use this time to your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning I want to invite you to focus on Thanksgiving. Now you're probably already saying, well, I'm already doing that. Maybe in your mind you're thinking about where you're going to be traveling to or who's traveling your way or what you're going to prepare or how you're going to spend the day. And those all are important plans that we need to be made and, and carried forth in order to have a, the gatherings that we so anticipate. But I want to take us to an even deeper level, if I may, of what true thanksgiving is all about. Beyond the food, the merriment, True thanksgiving is the opening of our hearts to God and recognizing God's generosity. I use this writing by Peter Blackburn that reflects on thanksgiving in this way. He entitled it, Using What You Have. He writes, My small son and I were taking a walk. In the far corner of the field, we found a small patch of beautiful and fragrant flowers. They were in the middle of weeds, almost completely hidden and unnoticed. Yet these flowers were blooming in full beauty. and We sensed their fresh fragrance. All of us have met persons unnoticed by many, but who in the midst of struggle and unlikely surroundings, far from the center of attention, live lives of beauty and fragrance. And living lives which seemed obscure, they faithfully fulfilled God's calling for them. God's question on the last day will not be, how much were you noticed? <laughs> or even, how much did you do? Rather, his question will be, were you faithful in fulfilling your calling where I placed you? 
Were you faithful in fulfilling your calling where I placed you? To do that, to fulfill our calling, wherever God has placed us in life, this is what generates thanksgiving. It was a day of thanksgiving for me just yesterday. I had the opportunity to travel to Ohio and have lunch with my mother. I had been trying to get there for some time. Uh, her birthday was late October, and uh, so I anticipated going up, but right before I was to leave, I learned that I had been exposed to COVID, and I didn't catch it, but nevertheless didn't want to take that risk and give that as a present, so I delayed the trip there. Then we had talked with my granddaughter, Reagan, who's four and enjoying preschool, enjoying it so much, she said, no, Papa, I don't want to go. I want to go to school. Well, her education's off to a great start, indeed. So finally, I just said, yesterday, I, I'm just going to go. And so I drove up. It was just such a beautiful day, as you recall yesterday. And just driving across Pennsylvania, and I was thinking about the sermon I would prepared for this day and uh, the scripture that Amy just shared with us and just thinking about God's generosity. Just, it surrounded me in so many ways. God's generosity. It's demonstrated in this parable that Jesus tells here of the master who gives his servants. One he gives five, to another he gives two talents, and to another one talent, each according to their ability and then he leaves them. He doesn't say, now you're to take these five talents and you're to ex uh, use them this exact way, or you're to take these two talents and you're supposed to use them this exact way. Instead, we see this beautiful description of God's generosity and of the free will that God gives us. God not forcing us into relationship. God not forcing faith upon us, but God providing each of us opportunity to fulfill our call. I arrived and said to my mother, I said, well, I want to take you out to lunch. She said, oh, but I, I have your favorites right here. And she did. She had this salad with grilled chicken that she knows I like with a special dressing, or you could have this and that. I No, I, I was going to take you out, but... She ended up serving me. But just having that moment and just watching her go about the kitchen and just our, our interaction just made for the most beautiful of setting and could see the joy we were experiencing in having that time together. To live a life where you seek to fulfill God's will, that we have opportunity to do so, this is our thankfulness. Each of us have such opportunity. Theologian John Buchanan put it this way. He stated, here Jesus invites us to be his disciples, to live our lives as fully as possible by investing them, by risking, by expanding the horizons of our responsibilities. To be his man or woman, he says, is not so much believing ideas about him, as it is following him. It is to experience renewed responsibility for the use and investment of these precious lives of ours. It's to be bold and brave, to reach high and care deeply. So the parable is the invitation to the adventure of faith, the high-risk venture of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's an invitation that we are each offered. This may be your first Sunday morning here. You may be brand new to the faith, or you may have been sitting in the same spot in the same pew for a number of years. It's God's fresh invitation to each and every one of us. We enjoyed our meal. Mom said, would you like some dessert? She knew better. I would never turn down a dessert. She said, I have some cake I saved for you, she said. Then she said, I was thinking about a topping. My mother showed me this, made this years ago, where you took some brown sugar and some starch and mixed it together, and let's see if it works. 
back to the stovetop, made it, sat down and put it over our cake. And she tasted it and she said, it's just the way I remembered it. Emulating what her mother had taught her. Emulating is what disciples are called to do. That's what the master had given to his servants to emulate, to put talents to use, to fulfill what God is calling us to do. She's now dean at Wesley Seminary. Carla Works put it this way when she shared, contrary to what might be modeled by some best-selling televangelist, the parable does not justify a gospel of economic prosperity. Instead, it challenges believers to emulate their master by using all that God has given them for the sake of the kingdom. Imagine, to emulate, to emulate what God has given us for the sake of God's work. That is our opportunity as the church to emulate. This afternoon, our youth group is going to be joining others, and Deb Brand will play in a key role with the New Neighbors uh, Interfaith Alliance, where 100 refugee families are going to be served a Thanksgiving meal at Asbury. And our youth are going to be right so proud of you and what, what you're going to be part of this ministry. I think about our, our spirit of giving tree that we're, we're part of here, where through linkages of learning, where we're going to build connections through the school system with families in our community. Remember, our mission after all is to be making disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world, and our vision to engage our community with the love of Christ. Here are those opportunities to be reaching out. Jesus saying, here's what you do with your talents. Here's your opportunity to do this. To the one was given five, he made five more. To another, had given two more. But the one was fearful and buried it in the ground, fearing what he'd heard about the master. Carla Works continues when she shares, in its literary setting, Jesus tells this story to his disciples to prepare them for the days ahead when their faith would be tested. This parable depicts how the disciples are to demonstrate their faithfulness as they anticipate the return of the Lord. What does faithfulness look like in a time of waiting? In Matthew's gospel, faithfulness is emulating the ministry of Jesus. Jesus has announced the arrival of God's kingdom by feeding the hungry, curing the sick, blessing the meek, and serving the least. That's what you're doing at Asbury. That's what we're doing through the spirit of giving tree and through the holiday giving of the city and through all these wonderful opportunities. That's what you do with your tithes and offerings. And by the way, thank you for those who have already turned in your pledge cards. We're off to a wonderful start and there still is opportunity to be part of the giving. You see, God is using us in reaching current and future generations. The work of transformation continues. So it was a wonderful afternoon food and mom and I catching up talking and we sat down and very she lives in the country and it's very peaceful and quiet but all of a sudden we heard a commotion and in ran a dog into the room my mother doesn't have a dog <laughs> well you imagine we got our attention well here it is my my nephew's family my nephew Adam is in the Air Force and he was away and so his wife Katie and two children they were visiting my sister next door so these are my my mother's great-grandchildren now so in comes the dog and in comes to the children and suddenly the room has taken on new energy there as the, we're finding and experiencing and I, I just think about what happens when we practice a life of thanksgiving when we practice our thankfulness it's not tiring those who were given five talents made five more did God give them a gold watch and say, okay, you're done, you're finished. No, they were given five more talents. It's the same with the two. New opportunities. New ways of reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ God is giving us. And as disciples, putting our talents to use is not just service, but it's also growing in our faith. 
I love what our exploring class is doing, one of our adult Sunday school classes, and we're going to be having an Advent study in Bev's class, and Dick Rohr is leading this class. They started to explore the painful issues of division and war in the Middle East, going on a resolution that was back at annual conference last summer talking about apartheid in the Holy Land. They began to explore this before October 7th. And now, going back to Dr. Kawada's writings, how can we go deeper? How can we understand what is happening that we may play a role in bringing peace into this world? How might God use our talents to bring wholeness about where there is brokenness? How might God use the church to continue to bring transformation? How dare we say, just bury our talent in the ground when Jesus is saying, I want to do more? It's not always busyness. God's not asking you to do what you could do 10 years ago that maybe you can't physically, mentally do today. One was given five, one was given three, one was given one, not because one was loved more or was more special to the master than the other, no. God calling us each into ministries of discipleship wherever we are at in this journey. Sometimes I read this story. It feels like it's harsh whether it's towards the one who was given the one talent and buried it, or if you go back last week when Deacon Helen preached a powerful sermon, and uh, if you didn't get to catch it, we have on our website, you can go back and watch the services from, from weeks ago, months ago. Well, she preached on this, you recall last week, where those who brought their bridesmaids who brought their oil, and some didn't have it, and so they missed out, and it just sound, it sounds so harsh. But I love this take that Professor Doug Hare put on it when he writes the following. He writes, what then can be said about the third servant as we look at this story today? The judgment still appears to be very harsh. However, if we consider the parable as a parable of invitation, perhaps his plight takes on a different perspective. If, as I have argued, the master is inviting, continually inviting into superabundance, grace, and joy, which is nothing other than inviting into discipleship, then the only conclusion that can be drawn is the third servant is not able to hear or accept the invitation. The third servant has not only hidden the talent, he has buried himself. The third servant is not so much condemned as he condemns himself to a place, a life that knows not joy, that knows only darkness and wailing and grinding of teeth. This place has such a life as self-created. It doesn't have to be. The good news of Christ that we celebrate, that feeds our thanksgiving, is the good news that God is not finished, that God's transforming love that has had such an effect upon this world as we look back is still at work today. But somehow, We have dismissed in our minds thinking that God's best work is behind us. That the church isn't as relevant as it once was. God has a mission for us today. That wasn't put on folks of yesterday or tomorrow, but here and now. To be a witness. To offer God's love. God is asking, what have you done with what I've given you? What a reminder it is that God has blessed us. What might we do with these blessings? What risk are you willing to take for Jesus Christ? What might that look like to share his love, to go deeper in your own relationship with God? A Sunday school class, a Bible study, coming to youth group, Children, youth, adult, Sunday school. Witnessing to your neighbor, witnessing in the workplace, just caring. Availing yourself to God. It can have and will have transforming effects. I close with what Mickey Anders shared. Looking back at the life and legacy of George Wallace. Some of us can remember these days. Anders writes... At his inauguration as governor of Alabama in 1963, 
George C. Wallace proclaimed, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. That same year, Wallace blocked the doors of the register's office at the University of Alabama, trying to halt National Guardsmen who were there to help enroll the university's first two black students. It continues. Wallace ran unsuccessfully for U.S. president in 64, 68, 72, and 76. 1968 election, he received 10 million votes. While campaigning in Laurel, Maryland in May of 1972, he was paralyzed by an assassin's bullet. And he spent the rest of his life in a wheelchair. Years later, in 1983, Wallace was genuinely converted to Christ and sincerely repented of his earlier views on race matters. In his last term as governor of Alabama, he appointed black officials to state offices. He even reached out to Arthur Bremer, the man who had tried to assassinate him in 1972. He once wrote to Bremer in prison telling him, I love you. On September 13, 1998, George Wallace died at age 79. Alabama Governor Bob James Jr. said, Governor Wallace was prepared to do battle where he thought it necessary at the time where he thought it was right. And then he had the courage to change and say there were times I was wrong. A day prior to his funeral, an estimated 25,000 mourners, almost as many blacks as whites, walked reverently past his coffin in the Alabama Capitol building. The most remarkable aspect of George Wallace's life was his willingness to change. In his early days, he made a nasty reputation for standing for some wrong ideas. But by the time of his death, even his enemies had to admit, George Wallace was willing to take the risk of change. Are you? Are you willing to take the risk of change and allow this to be a day and a week and a lifetime of thanksgiving where you avail yourself to God and where we as a congregation avail ourselves to God, saying, Lord, look what you've blessed us with. Look at our resources, whether it's people, or time, money, talents. How might you use us? God will answer in powerful ways. And our thanksgiving, that is our opening ourselves to God, will be a blessing to many. I give you these challenges as we go forth this week. Ask yourself, are you being faithful and fulfilling your calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ? How are you expanding the horizons of your discipleship? Do you ever think about Christ's return? How does this time of waiting affect your everyday living? And what risk have you taken lately for Christ? What risk is Christ asking you to take? The opportunity is ours. Thanks be to God, we have this opportunity to begin anew. Amen. And so it is with thanksgiving in our hearts that we take this time to present our offering unto God. And for our offertory, our bell choir is going to offer us this special in music. Grace Ringers will be using a different doxology this morning.
we thank you for this opportunity. As we just heard so beautifully played, to take our lives and let them be truly consecrated unto thee. Lord, take our talents. You're the source of them. Lord, as you ask us this question, it's not to condemn, but it's to provide us opportunity to make a difference in this world. The gifts of mercy, the gifts of justice, the desire to be sources of well-being, you have blessed the church with. Grace to life that pours abundance. We are overflowing. Show us, O Lord, how these gifts can make a difference. Use them for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name. Let us continue in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We know that's the theme of the week, or Thanksgiving. We have our plans in our mind of what the day will be like, and we thank you as we pray for safe travels. We pray for those who serve in our militaries who will not be home. Be with their loved ones. Be with them. Keep them safe. Most of all, God, we pray for peace in your world. Lord, we recognize that there has been so much hurt, devastation, that we give up at times, thinking we can make a difference. But then all we have to do is to hear a text read, gather to worship, and offering songs of praise. When we hear the laughter and the cries of little ones, we are reminded that you still are at work. You are still breathing new life into this world. You are still blessing us with talents. Sometimes, oh God, we convince ourselves that our best days are behind us. But all we have to do is look to the cross. Oh Lord, how many times in your times here on earth did folks want to crown you king and make you the ruler of their city or town or, or nation, but sometimes you had to even sneak away in order to continue your work. It wasn't easy for you then, and it's not easy now. But here we are, whether it's in the serving of a Thanksgiving meal, the buying of a gift, participating in ministries right here in our community, the desire to help still thrives. You are the source of all that's good. The love that is ours to share, you are the source of. But it's more than our giving wonderful as these talents are, whether they are of money, time, ability. You want a relationship, a right relationship with everyone. So Lord, that starts right here. We are reminded that you're not just a God to call upon in times of emergency or when times are rough, you're there. But you want to be part of our everyday living. You have entrusted us with your gifts you're not micromanaging us. You have given us, and we, we don't know the day or the hour when you'll return, and we don't have to. Because each day and time is opportunity to be about your work. For those who are in need, for those who feel as if life is too overwhelming right now, may we offer a word or a gesture that will point to you. We thank you for the progress we have made in race relations and pray, O oh God, that you will continue your work of justice and use us to overcome racism wherever it exists. Wherever we are seeing hate practiced, we pray, O oh God, for well-being. We pray, O oh God, for peace in Gaza. We pray, O oh God, for our leaders who are making decisions that affect so many. 
who must feel at times like the weight of the world is upon their shoulders. May they be reminded of your presence and your strength. And to our own homes and lives where there is division. And in the homes where there are empty chairs around the table this year, be a source of strength. To the unspoken concerns that we carry in our hearts, and for those spiritual tuggings that are calling us to responsible living unto you, we thank you. You have purpose and plan for each and every one. Help us, O oh God, as a congregation to bring out the best in one another as we seek to glorify you. We thank you, O oh God, that you have given us a prayer to pray that brings us hope and assurance that you are not finished. And let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our closing hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, found on screen and page 102. be seated. So again, a reminder that this Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, if you can be here in person, great. If you'd like to join us online, please visit our church website, same Zoom link that we are using. Next Sunday morning, it's not Advent yet, so we're going to have Christ the King Sunday, and what that will look like is we'll have our worship service, and afterwards, you're invited to stay because we're going to, traditionally it's called greening the church. We're going to be decorating uh, the entire church, so we invite you to stay. We're going to be fed, 
It won't be turkey, I'm assured. You're going to be a little tired of that by next Sunday. So we're going to have a good meal and a good time, and your efforts will help make a difference as we prepare for the Advent season. I remind you of our challenges for this week. Ask yourself, are you being faithful in fulfilling your calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ? How are you expanding the horizons of your discipleship? Do you ever think about Christ's return? How does this time of waiting affect your everyday living? What risks have you taken lately for Christ? And what risk is Christ asking you to take? Now as we go forth, may God's peace follow you wherever you go, guiding and guarding you, that you may live in joy and thanksgiving with God, self, neighbor, and all creation. Amen. Thank you.